Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on Dropship Advanced, the latest in Window Book's educational webinar series. My name is Monica Lundquist, and I'm the Postal Affairs and Technical Support Manager here at Window Book. Assisting me today is Mary Bush, our Manager of Client Resources. The agenda for today's webinar is to explore more advanced dropship topics than our basics webinar covers. We will review the costs associated with dropshipping and show you how to build a freight table in DATMAP. We will discuss the sources of the postage savings of dropshipping and the calculations for determining the net savings. We will also discuss dropshipping to improve delivery or to control in-home date delivery. We will cover Priority Mail Open and Distribute, or PMOD, which is a great option for small dropship volumes or problem delivery areas. We will also provide an overview of co-services, which are used in conjunction with dropshipping to generate deeper postage discounts on selected mailings. We will also discuss making appointments for delivery of drop shipments and the Facility Access and Shipment Tracking System, or FAST. At that point, I will be turning over the presentation to Mary Bush, Window Books Manager of Client Resources, and she'll be giving us a live demonstration of DATMAIL Toolbox, which includes many advanced dropshipping functions. And lastly, we'll open up the floor to questions from the audience. We will be just touching briefly on PMOD and FAST, as we have separate webinars on both of those specific topics. Now, just a quick review from our basics webinar. Dropshipping bypasses a number of postal transportation and processing steps. Mail is typically dropshipped to one of the following types of postal facilities a network distribution center, or NDC, and these are formally known as bulk mail centers, an auxiliary service facility, or ASF, sectional center facility, or SCF, area distribution center, or ADC, and a destination delivery unit, or DDU. Bypassing these steps saves money for the Postal Service, which they share with mailers in the form of dropship and zone skipping discounts. Mailers may transport the mail themselves or contract with a third-party consolidator or logistics provider to transport the mail. There are costs associated with dropshipping, which must be taken into account when analyzing mailings for dropship potential. If you are using a consolidation service, there is the cost of transporting the mail from the printing plant or letter shop to a logistics provider consolidation center. Consolidation services are used by many mailers who do not have sufficient volume on their own to fill trucks to destination postal facilities. By combining the mail volume from numerous printers and letter shops, consolidators can optimize the filling of truckloads to these destinations, thereby keeping the costs down and spreading those costs among multiple printers or letter shops. Then there is the cost of transporting the mail to the destination postal facilities, such as the NDCs and SCFs that we just talked about either from the origin plant or from the consolidation center. There may be accessorial charges from the transportation provider. This is especially true if you are shipping to DDU facilities. These are often smaller post offices which may not have a dock door or a pallet jack. This may require a lift gate on the truck or a pallet jack to be transported along with the mail. DDU shipments also require the driver to assist with unloading the mail which may be an additional charge. There may also be additional charges for smaller trucks if the destination postal facilities cannot accommodate larger semi-trucks. And as fuel prices have risen in recent years, most transportation companies now assess a fuel surcharge rather than trying to build in fluctuating fuel costs into their base rates. This charge is typically a percentage of the freight charges. Most transporters adjust this rate as the cost of diesel fuel rises and falls. And lastly, there may be also administrative fees that are put in place by printers, letter shops, and consolidators. And these are to cover the cost of special software, material handling, appointment coordination, paperwork, and so forth. All of these cost elements must be considered during dropship analysis to make sure a true picture of savings and cost is presented. So, where exactly do the dropship postage savings come from? Well, this depends on the class of mail. For periodicals and package services mail, a portion of the postage is based on zones, 
or the distance of the destination from the origin or entry point.